Hello. Um, today I'm going to discuss with you the pulse volume recordings versus segmental pressures. I'm going to discuss um, how they're performed and how, what the differences are between them. Uh, PVR is a or pulse volume recording is a non-invasive vascular test that measures the change in limb volume related to the cardiac cycle. Um, it's typically performed with a Parks machine. This type of exam uh, usually use, utilizes blood pressure cuffs applied to the thigh, calf, and ankle. Um, the cuffs are then connected to the Parks machine and inflated to 65 plus or minus 5 millimeters of mercury. Um, PVR waveforms are then recorded for each limb segment. The technician must ensure the gain and or scale is optimized so the entire waveform um, is visualized. Note about PVR, um, the proximal disease will affect the contour of all PVR waveforms distally. So if there's a proximal stenosis or occlusion, everything distal to that would be affected. Um, PVR is also not affected by calcified arteries, and they're easier to perform than continuous wave Doppler, a lot of people say. When interpreting these waveforms, um, the pulse volume waveforms reflect the volume of blood coming into the cuff segment. So an abnormal PVR at the thigh would indicate um, aortoiliac disease. Um, abnormal calf would um, indicate occlusive disease in the superficial femoral or popliteal segments and abnormal ankle uh, suggests tibial disease. I have an illustration here to demonstrate what I'm talking about. Um, the normal here has a sharp upslope and a prominent dichrotic notch in late systole, early diastole. Um, mild disease in causes broadening of the waveform and the reflected wave will be absent. Um, these are typically slightly um, less of an amplitude than the normals. Moderately abnormal has a rounded peak, uh, no reflective wave, and um, a much greater um, difference in amplitude than the normal. And then again, severely abnormal waveform has an incredibly diminished amplitude and it or possibly it could even be flatlined. Um, segmental pressures, on the other hand, uh, measure arterial blood pressures at different points in the leg. Um, there are two methods typically performed, the three cuff and the four cuff. Uh, the two main differences between them is uh, the thigh cuff on the three would be a 17 centimeter bladder as opposed to using two 12s on the four cuff method. Um, the four cuff method is also better at differentiating inflow disease from femoral artery disease. A note about segmental pressures, um, they cannot distinguish stenosis from total occlusion. Uh, they are not spe uh, specific in determining exact location of the disease either. They will only show you which segments are affected. Uh, ankle pressures of 50 millimeters of mercury or less are associated with ischemic breast pain. Uh, I have a, another illustration here demonstrating um, which colors are coded for the Parks machine. The brachial will be the red, the proximal thigh will be the blue, the distal thigh is green, um, below the knee is yellow, and the ankle is going to be the orange. 
when performing segmental pressures, you're going to want to position the patient supine, uh, place the cuffs on the patient, taking care to utilize the correct size for the method being performed. Um, you're going to want to ensure the cuffs are secured tightly. Um, and you're going to be either using a 10, 12, or 17 centimeter cuff, depending on which method you're going to be using in the patient's body habitus. Um, again, for the four cuff, you're going to be using two 12s in the thigh, um, and for the three, you're going to be using 17. <clears throat> um, you're going to obtain, when you begin, you're going to obtain the bilateral arm pressures by placing um, the continuous wave um, pencil probe Doppler over the radial or brachial artery. Um, you can inflate the cuff until the signal is obliterated. Um, and then you're going to pump it up just maybe 20 millimeters of mercury higher to ensure that it's completely closed off. Um, once that occurs, you're going to slowly release the pressure until the pulse is audible again. This would be the systolic blood pressure. Um, you're going to take note at this point um, and proceed contralaterally. Use the uh, higher of the two pressures um, of the arms for leg comparisons and for your ABI calculations. Um, a little note about that is um, any pressure differential greater than or equal to 20 millimeters of mercury suggests a subclavian stenosis or occlusion in the lower pressure artery. Um, also, never take blood pressures in an arm uh, with a fistula stent or graft. Uh, when performing segmental pressures, obtain uh, blood pressures in the legs at the ankle. You're going to position the pencil probe over the dorsalis pedis artery and the posterior tibial artery. Um, when doing this, you're going to have to maintain it at a 45 to 60 degree angle to ensure um, accurate velocities. Uh, ensure not to apply too much pressure when you're locating this artery because you can inadvertently occlude the vessel which can cause your measurements to be skewed as well. Um, once the pulse is audible you're going to inflate the cuff again to approximately 20 millimeters of mercury higher than when the pulse disappears. When this occurs, you'll slowly deflate the cuff till the pulse once again is audible. Um, this is the systolic pressure of the artery. Take note of it and continue to uh, the other artery or contralaterally, depending on where you are in your exam. Once this is all complete, you're going to want to perform an ankle brachial index. This will help you determine um, the severity of the disease. You do this by taking the highest ankle pressure and dividing it by the highest brachial pressure. Uh, normal is uh, approximately 0.9 to 1.35. Um, anything higher than that is probable calcified arteries. Um, anything below 0.9 is going to be abnormal. Um, 0.5 or less indicates multi-level disease or long segment occlusion. And 0.3 or less indicates ischemic rest pain. <clears throat> um, with the three cuff method, the normal segmental pressure um, includes the thigh, should be equal to or slightly greater than the brachial pressure. Um, if it's abnormal, this indicates a hemodynamically significant stenosis greater than 60% diameter reduction in the segment leading into or under the cuff, which would be indicated by a 30 millimeter mercury uh, or greater pressure drop when compared to the brachial pressures. 
Again, um, an abnormal thigh pressure can be due to aortoiliac disease or proximal femoral artery disease. Um, in the four cuff method, a normal high thigh pressure should be greater than or equal to 20 millimeters of mercury um, above the brachial pressure due to the high thigh cuff artifact. Um, if abnormal, the thigh pressure would be less than the arm pressure, and this indicates inflow disease or aortoiliac disease. Um, if the pressure gradient is greater than 30 millimeters of mercury between the high thigh and the low thigh, this is femoral femoral disease. Thank you.